God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His Hello, you're welcome to week two of our program. My name is Pastor James Irobe. Today we'll be looking at sharing the love of God. This is DVD number three. How do we share the love of God with other people? Somebody said, love talked about is easily ignored, but love demonstrated is irresistible. That's Carl Thomas. Then the Bible tells us in John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, indeed, if you have love one for another. There's also another saying of a man who said, love is about giving something away. He said, a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. And love is not love in your heart until you give it away. So there's a story of this Special Olympic for Handicapped Children that was organized some years back. A youth minister who attended that program related the story of one Andrew, who was also handicapped and took part in the 220 yards dash. When the whistle was blown and they started the race, Andrew was 50 yards well ahead of all his mates and everybody was cheering him up. And he was doing very well. And as he was getting to the finishing line, he decided to look back, only to find out that his friend had fallen. You know what he did? He turned back, <laughs> went and picked up his friend, and put his friend on his cart, and the boat went on the race. And of course, they were the very last. But then, as they were going, the cheering became louder, and they finished. And what is the lesson? The lesson, of course, is the fact that there are more important things than finishing first. He took care of his friend. He lost the chance to win the gold medal. Why? Because he took care of his friend. All right, there's another story about a missionary to India. This missionary got to India and was doing his best to learn the language so that he could minister to the people. He had given them books, given them tracts, CDs to listen to, but none of them they were not just interested. So along the line, as he was still trying to study the language, he became sick. He fell sick, and he had to be admitted into a hospital, a very dirty place, but he was there with so many other patients. There was this night, he was coughing badly because of his tuberculosis, and then he noticed an elderly man was struggling, trying to get out of his bed. The man struggled and struggled. He couldn't get out of the bed. And uh, so along the line, he began to cry. And he couldn't understand why the man was crying. But as the day broke, he found out why the man was crying. He was crying because he wanted to go to the toilet. He couldn't go to the toilet, so he defecated on the bed. Well, the nurses came, and they were not happy with him. They, they, they cleaned him up, no doubt, but one of them slapped him. And all other patients you know, laughed at him. And he began to cry again. All right, the following night, uh, this missionary woke up again at 2 a.m. because of his cough and noticed the same man was struggling, stretching, trying to stand up. And against his will, he stood up and went to the man, took the man off his bed, took him to the toilet. The man defecated in the toilet and he brought him back to his bed. By the following morning, guess what happened? People were queuing by this missionary's bed to receive his tracts, to receive his CDs, and his books. Eventually, many of them gave their life to Christ without him preaching any message. Love preached the message. Hallelujah. All right, so Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, two are better than one. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to lift him up. People who get down need the help of those with the love of God to get them up and going again. 
how to share the love of God with others. We need to cultivate genuine interest in people. Paul, though experiencing hardship in prison, was concerned about the welfare of his people. Interesting. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 to 20, Paul wrote, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I'm confident that in the Lord, that I myself will come soon. But I think it necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, who you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and he almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I, am, therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad that I may have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourself could not give to me. Paul's admonition in Philippians chapter 2, 3 to 4 said, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. In other words, be genuinely concerned about others. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why do I go to church? Do I go to church because I feel I owe God a debt and by going to church I will be paying back? Or because I'm carrying a burden and I hope that during the service the burden will be lifted? Or because I like the music, the fellowship, the preaching? Why do you go to church? Many go for different reasons. Why should we go to church? If we are genuinely interested in people, then church becomes a training ground for all of us. Amen. Where we can learn how to help people. How do we demonstrate the love of God to others? When you come to church, look out for that woman who is struggling with two babies, who hardly cope with them. You can render a helping hand. Perhaps you are sitting by a visitor, a guest to the church. Let him know who you are. Introduce yourself. And let him know that you can help him to grow his faith. You can help him. Someone is sick in the hospital. Be willing to visit. Or perhaps somebody is in grief who has suffered a loss. Comfort them through visit, through text messages, through emails, and of course through your prayers. You are in the bus and some elderly people are standing. What do you do? Leave your seat for them. That's how to demonstrate love. Or perhaps an elderly person is carrying some luggage that is just too much for them. What do you do? You have so much strength. <laughs> Invest your strength. Helping your colleagues even at work is a way of demonstration of love. We thank God for people who are already doing this, but we pray that we will all be involved in demonstrating the love of God to humanity. So, the result of caring for others. One of the results for caring for others is that as you get involved in caring for others, you forget your own problems. In fact, your problems fizzle away. We're told that Job, when he began to pray for his friends, God turned his captivity. That's how powerful it is. 
Then Isaiah said something very interesting in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 10 to 12. It says, feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine forth from the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water whenever you are dry and restoring your strength. You'll be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuke the deserted ruins of your city. Then you'll be known as a rebuilder of wars and a restorer of homes. That will be you. Amen. You will find that when you are in trouble also, what happens? Others will come to help you. Why? Because you have, you have sown. And helping others, being concerned about others, also deepen friendships and relationships. In conclusion, your best friend, the friend of friends, is Jesus. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you fall, he will pick you up, walk with you hand in hand to the finishing line. You can trust him with all of your life. If you don't know him as your friend, Lord, and Savior, he is waiting for you. So invite him into your heart, to your life, and ask him to forgive you all your sins. And I tell you, that's exactly what will happen. Hallelujah. So for today's discussion, we'll be looking at why is love considered to be the greatest? Number two, in what practical ways can we demonstrate the love of God to other people? And then finally, what are some of the challenges we face in trying to share the love of God with people? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause you to increase in faith and make you know him better every day. God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye. God will make a way where there seems to be no way.